here. Hello, and welcome to Lamplight Crochet. My name is Laura. I'm so glad you could join me today. And this is January of 22. I haven't placed a video on my crochet channel since November of 20, I think it is. So I wanted to catch you up a little bit on what happened over 21 as to why I wasn't posting. First of all, I want to tell you that today I am going to show you how to make this Blues Hues Pot Holder. That's what I named it. It is a Blue Hues Pot Holder. I love it. It's absolutely uh, popping to the eye and it's made out of inexpensive yarn and we're going to hold two strands together with two skeins like this um, that come from mainstays inexpensive uh, they're four weight yarn they're acrylic and I know what you're thinking you're thinking a pot holder out of acrylic what are you doing well normally pot holders are made out of cotton but in this case, I just want a kind of more of a decorative one. This is not recommended at all to reach into the oven and pull something out with at all. You do not do that with this. You can pull something out of the microwave with it, or you can just place it on your table as a pretty piece to put something that's warm on it if you want to, to kind of protect the table. So that's what I'm going to do today is show you how to make this pot holder from double strands um, from two skeins of yarn. And you'll need an eye hook, by the way. But before I give you instructions on how to do that, I'm going to tell you about my 21. There were multiple surprises all through that year, so I just never could seem to make it behind the camera. So um, I'll start from January. My husband and I realized we needed a new car, and so we bought a small, inexpensive used car. And then we felt like we should go on vacation. You know, 20 in 2020, everybody was all sitting inside. So we uh, wanted to take our granddaughters on vacation, so we took a six-day vacation. And in May, and uh and when we went um you know we we had an awesome time and uh, I was crocheting off and on all throughout the year but it was just a year of surprises and so when right after we returned from vacation we uh got a call from my oldest uh, daughter our both of our oldest daughter in um the East Coast, on the East Coast, and she said, I'm coming down. Well, we hadn't seen her in two to three years, and we thought, awesome. So here she came down, and um, and we had such an awesome summer, and by that time, it was really hot, and she uh, was visiting with us with her children. We got to see her grandchildren. It's just so awesome. I'm just trying to tell you about my year 21 because every time I turned around, I thought, I'm going to make a crochet video. <laughs> it just somehow got canceled by life, so I'm just sharing this with you. Um, she said, mom, let's, um, she's a real DIY person. She said, let's redo the kitchen floor. I said, awesome. That had been on my husband and I agenda and, uh, we had not gotten to it. And so she just helped us do it, redo our kitchen floor in a floating floor. We put it together on ourselves, uh, by ourselves. We got on our hands and knees and put it together all by ourselves. And then as soon as we were done with that, um, she, you know, she was going to stay for two weeks. Well, we did that in a couple of days. And she said, Mom, let's pull the carpet and do the living room floor. <laughs> so we went out and bought the floating floor um, tile for that. And we got on our hands and knees and did that. Mostly it was her and my other daughter. And my husband did it when he wasn't working. And I helped helped with the kids. And we were just keeping the house, you know, decent while everything was torn all up. And all I remember is cooking and helping out and keeping iced tea running because it was so hot. If you have ever lived in Missouri or you know about Missouri, it is hot. So I was doing this at the time. And uh, so we laid the, the living room floor and um, we just did uh, various things. She went outside one day. I mean, she's really a DIY person and I love her to death. And she said, Mom, let's let's redo the landscaping. <laughs> so I said, you know, I'm with you. And by the way, I had been cutting out bushes by hand since February of 21. So I was already on top of that and it was cleared out and she said, let's just redo the landscaping. So for Mother's Day, they bought me a bunch of flowers and we bought the basics to do the landscaping. So we did all that and she extended her stay for two more weeks. So she was here for an entire month out of the summer. Now, if you know how summers go, one month out of the summer, that's a long part of the summer, it seems like especially in Missouri. So we were doing this in 105 degree heat, literally. My little grandchildren were used to the East Coast, so they were used to cooler weather and not so much humidity. So they had to understand that they had to stay inside and play. They could not go outside for long periods of time, not at 105 degree heat. 
And so anyway, my 21 was just really busy. And, um, um, you know, um, my husband and I, I'm going to share this part of my life with you, had been taking care of his father for years, over a decade of time. He was, um, he had fallen and broken his hip and we, um, moved in here where he was and we took care of him for over a decade. And so we were just kind of rebuilding our lives. He passed in 19 and thank goodness he passed before the big, you know, deal in 2020. But we were putting our lives back together, you know, over 20 and, and 21. So uh, we were really just kind of redoing the house and getting things redone and whatnot. And so I was still in the middle of writing a book, too. I felt led to write a book. And so then when our daughter flew out and left after that month of summer stay, we got a call from my son. Now, we haven't seen my son in about five years since he was married. We were at his wedding out in the beautiful mountains out in the east. So he said, we're coming down. I said, awesome. So here I was getting this, that we were getting the flooring and the bathroom done, you know, in the bedroom that he would stay in. And we were getting that all ready. And it turned out that he couldn't come after all. And so that was toward the end of the summer there and in 21. And, and, it, and he couldn't come because he had an emergency. So they had to stay at home. And then he got a, we got a call and found out that they were expecting their first child. So we were just ecstatic that it was our first grandbaby from them coming on the way, still yet due um, in April. So I just wanted to share my life with you in 21. It just buzzed by. It was so fast. So then when everything kind of settled down, it was fall. And I thought, I've got to finish my book. So I did finish my book. And that's the reason I'm telling you all of this. It is not a crochet related book. I'm going to warn you right now. It is not a crochet related book. However, this is my channel and I can do what I want on it for a few seconds of time. So I wanted to plug my book. So I am doing that now. It is published as of January 2, 2022 on Amazon. Here is my book. It reflects my faith. It is called Divine Encounters. Subtitle is True Accounts of Heaven, Healings, and God's Supernatural Help. My family um, is a prayer family. We pray all the time, and yes, the Lord has brought visions to me, and I have pinned them. So that is what I did. This is my book. Please go to Amazon.com, look it up under my name, Laura Bovard, and you will see it there. It looks just like this. They are all true stories, and uh, the encounters in it or the visions that I experienced during prayer, always during prayer, were given by the Holy Spirit, and I pinned them. So, And also, I want to share that... Um, when I was two to three years old, and I have confirmation of that from many people and just my own memory, I, uh, my mom would come and pray with me at night, you know, before bed, and that's the very first chapter of my encounters as a child in a garden with Jesus. Now, you can choose not to believe, not to buy, I don't care. I'm just plugging my book, okay? So this is my book, and uh, please go look it up on Amazon, Laura Bovard. And now I'm going to switch over to showing you how to crochet this pot holder. So um, this looks like it's probably about four by four inches, not real big. Like I said, once again, I want to say, do not pick anything up out of the oven with this pot holder, okay? Unless you maybe make another one like this, which is double stranded, and put stuffing in between, you know, put polyfill in between the two and make it really... Um, super uh, protective of your hands. This is really only to pick something up out of the microwave with or to put on your table and to put something a little warm on it to protect the wood on your table. So today I'm going to show you how to make this Blue Hues pot holder. That's the name of it. And now let's begin. Okay, we are making this beginner friendly project blues uh, pot holder. I call it my blue hues pot holder. It's just so many beautiful colors of blue. It's made out of double crochet. I have an eye hook with me and two skeins of yarn. All right, so I'm going to move those off to the left so they'll feed over into my picture and I'll just place this up here so you can keep your eye on it if you want to. 
and go ahead and put a slip knot on your hook. I have videos on how to do that. As soon as you get that on there, now you're doing both strands at the same time and you're working with them as one, we're going to chain 24. So one, two, three, four. Now you go to 24, I'm only going to go to 12. Okay, I'm doing that uh, because I've already made a larger one and I just want to make one small for an example. So here I think I have 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, I do. So now when we get to 24, you're doing 24, we will skip the first three stitches from the hook. So we start counting from here. 1, 2, 3. We count 3 over. We're going to wrap the yarn around and place the hook down in that, well, one, two, three, four. Sorry, I made a mistake. We're going to wrap around and place it in the fourth chain from the hook, not the third, the fourth, and make a double crochet. All right, that's the first one made. And these three chains that we skipped, that is operating as a double crochet. Now we are going to go on to the next stitch and do the same, another double crochet, and do this clear to the end so that we will have a nice thick pattern going and we'll see you when I get to the end. Okay, we've gone clear to the end of the row. Now I'll remind you that I made 12 uh, chains, you should have made 24. So I went clear to the end of my row here and I'm going to chain up three. One, two, three. I'm going to turn my work. Now if you count from the chain three across, you should have 20 stitches. So I want you to count that chain three from the first row and you should have 20. Now I am going to go ahead and crochet across and this is the way we will continue until the end of the pot holder. So now that I have my chain three, which counts as a stitch, I'm going to go down in that very first hole right there, the very first stitch. So I will do a double crochet in that one, a double crochet in the next stitch and I will continue on to the end and we will have a beautiful pot holder, blue hues pot holder. I just think it's so pretty. I'm gonna have to pull some more yarn out here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this mini one as a microwave uh, handler. I, that's just one of my most used products that I have out of all the things I've crocheted is my little microwave pot holders. Oh man, they just work so well and and they're so easy to grab and uh, they, they're not big and cumbersome. Now, if you have a bigger pot inside your microwave, you can use this to pull it out with, or you can just use this on your table to protect it. But as far as uh, a mini, I think I'll go a few more rows, see what it looks like. You can just eye this. I'm actually making this for the first time now. I don't know where I want to crochet it to as far as rows. But I want you to make a double crochet in your chain three stitch here at the end of the row on chain two. You're going to have to do that. I mean, row two. You're going to have to do that. So there we go. It's nice and even. If you don't do that, you will not have an even pot holder. Chain up three. Turn again. We go into the first stitch right there. And we do a double crochet. And we just continue like that until it reaches the size we want it to be. I'm going to stop right there because you have everything you need to know. And so here is the finished product. I did not finish it off around. You can, you can insert yarn and do a single crochet stitch all the way around to really finish it off if you want. I don't bother if it looks fine and it looks really even and neat to me. So here is the pot holder and I hope you enjoy making it, my blue hues pot holder. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time at Lamplight Crochet.